Ben de farklı bir açıklama için yine. Ee, today I'm gonna do this one or two. Not the musical this time, but the game. Like, my goal was that I was gonna play Portal 2, and then I was gonna make all these videos. Like, I got a musical review. Should already be posted by the time I do this. This is the video where I review the game. And then I wanted to make, like, some little animations and maybe some main things, too. I got, like, a whole bunch of stuff planned, but... I'm kind of working on those all at once, and then posting them like a month into the future. <laughs> so that's cool. <coughs> oh, sorry. Eventually, I want to make a list that's just like, all my favorite games. But first I have to play those. But just know if it was a top 10 or even a top 5 list, Portal 2 would definitely be on that list. Which also means I'm probably going to be a little biased, and there's going to have more good stuff than bad stuff for this review. So I thought I'd just let you know. And I ended up breaking this into sections, too. Like, you you already know this is going to be at least an hour. I don't know if it's going to be multiple parts. Because we got, like, gameplay, music, uh, characters, story, the setting, just, like, general thoughts. I got, like, six pages of notes here. Just reading. I wrote, like, a whole script for this one. Well, except for this little intro I'm going to do. I want to <coughs> talk about what this game means to me, too. And just, like, my history with the series in general. I don't know, because I'm like, oh, this is going to be one of my favorite games. I might as well talk about, like, why it's impacted me so much, you know? <coughs> Sorry, it's like, it's really hot, and I keep drinking water. I'm kind of a mess today. I mean, when am I not, but you get what I mean. <laughs> when I first heard about this series, I remember, because I only got a computer, like, within the last three years or so. So, like, we mostly had, like, Nintendo consoles, and then sometimes I'd be able to go on my brother's computer. So, like, I only really got to play stuff growing up, like, on the Wii, for example, and the Xbox 360. Anyway, I remember when I was in elementary school, I was with my childhood bestie, and I even remember, I remember this, like, pretty well compared to most stuff for some reason. <coughs> and she was super into Portal, and she was telling me about the game. But what I clearly remember is her telling me how at the beginning of Portal 2, how Cho will, like, sleeps for a super long time and then wakes up in this broken down facility. And I didn't know anything about the game, like, what it looked like, or what, even if it was a puzzle game, or literally anything about it. I think she did tell me what Cho looked like a little bit, though. So, like, I mean, now that I know and I've played the game, I know what it looks like, obviously. But back then, hearing, like, that some human lady just wakes up like a bajillion years in the future in this broken down place. <coughs> it's something I thought about drawing too. I imagined like, a, a, you know like in a movie where they're showing like a huge, huge room and they'll have an angle where it's like it's looking down from above? I imagined like that and it was like some spooky dark looking house or some Adam's Family shit. <coughs> and I imagined show like popping out of this huge black coffin for some reason. I mean, I didn't think she was a vampire or anything, but I thought that's just where my brain goes to when I hear, like, yeah, somebody just wakes up after a super duper long amount of sleeping, like, ridiculously long, you know, the whole 999 thing. So that was kind of the visual in my brain until I actually played the game for, like, a pretty long time. And then I remember I got to play... I first got introduced to this game, like, for being able to play on my brother's computer and stuff. Like, I played the first game, and the first game's cool, but it's just one of those series where it's like, I don't feel like both games are equals. Like, Portal 2, to me, is better than the first one in every way, but the first game doesn't feel like a prequel game. It feels more like, like a demo or something to the second game. Like, if it was released that way, I wouldn't have even liked it noticed or anything, you know? Because <coughs> that's the thing, the first game could literally be beaten in a single afternoon, which I think is how it was, like, when I'd replay the game again sometimes. The first time, I just, like, it took me a while to get into it, so I think it took me longer than the, maybe, like, a few days or so. I don't really have, like, limited periods to play this game. So, yeah, I played the first game. It wasn't really anything special to me. Like, I thought Gladys was cool, and the portal and stuff felt pretty nice in my hands, um, like, control-wise. But 
what I most remember from the first game, besides still alive and that scene at the end of the game, is um <coughs> that part like after Gladys puts you in the fire room and you have to escape and get to her chamber and just that whole section and how creepy and empty it was. It felt like I wasn't really playing a video game, more like I was wandering around like an abandoned building or something. And this is definitely a feeling that Portal 2 has as well. And then, let me see, then like, sometime later, I got to play the game on the computer again, and I got to the part, like, you fall down the pit, and you end up an old aperture, and I did like, a test chamber maybe? And then, for some reason, when I'd go to play the game again, it wasn't working. So, I'd only gotten to play, like, the first half of the game, and that was, like, my experience with it for the first time for the first while, I guess. <coughs> and then what else happened? Uh, the funny story, this game kind of played a bit of a part in my love life a little bit. I'm not kidding. Um, when I was in middle school, this is one of the games I became super obsessed with, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. I was, um, I, I rode the bus home every day, and our middle school would give us, like, iPads. Like, some people kind of hacked the iPads and put some stuff on there, but I used it just, like, because I didn't have a computer at that point. I used it as, like, oh, yeah, this is my gateway to the internet now. And, you know, I played a little bit of Portal then, and Wheatley is my favorite, so I had all these pictures of Wheatley on the iPad. Not anything, like, weird or anything. I think it was just, like, normal pictures of him, like, fan art stuff, whatever. Not anything, like, cringy, though compared to nowadays. Anyway, I was looking through those, because you don't have internet connection on the bus, at least back then, and <coughs> I remember, this is one of those, like, core memories for me, too, of just this person's voice from behind me, because I'm at the front of the bus, saying something like, oh, is that Wheatley from Portal 2? And I look around, I turn around, and I don't see anyone, because the bus seats are huge, and I'm sitting by myself, and I look over again, and you know, there's like kind of a gap between like the end of the bus seat and then the window. And I just, I look there and someone's just staring at me. There's just this person's eye looking at me. Uh, no, it's not like it was weird or anything. We became friends and ended up dating and stuff. But um, he's cool, he's cool. But yeah, that's like a core <laughs> memory for me. Anyway, the reason I had to bring that part up in the story was because, um, we became friends, and he obviously knew I liked Portal 2. Everyone in middle school knew I liked Portal 2, especially my science class. Anyway, um, yeah, I told him how, like, you know, I got to play some of the game, and I never got to finish. And he was like, oh, I got the game for Xbox 360, which did happen to be the only non-Nintendo console I had, um, even now. So yeah, he lent me the game, and I played through the whole thing on the Xbox 360, and that was my first time going through the whole game, and I play, like, I wasn't always allowed to use the Xbox 360 downstairs, so it's not like I got to binge the game or anything, so to speak. I took my time with it, and, man, I wish that reaction from middle school me is what I could have recorded instead. I, I was a whole mess when I finished this game, man. I mean, we're gonna talk about that in a second. But yeah, that was my first experience, and then... Got my own computer like years, years later, um, the one I have now, and then I, um, you know, got Steam. I still haven't bought the first game yet. I'm planning on playing that, especially because there's the RTX thing that's coming out soon. So my playthrough Portal 1 first channel is going to be with the RTX settings, hopefully. Anyway, back to the second game. Uh, I saw it was on sale, one of the Steam sales around, like, Christmas, and it was, like, a dollar? Like a dollar ninety nine, and I'm like, oh wow, one of my favorite games ever for a dollar. I'm never gonna get this chance again, so I bought it. And I was hyped, and that was when I got my Steam controller too. Got it for Christmas, so yeah, I sat on the bed around Christmas time, started playing the game again. I felt so nostalgic. I was I was so happy, you guys. And I took my time, like looking through everything, getting to play with a controller that felt really nice in my hands. This time the game didn't like break or anything or whatever. I could have continued at any time. And it's like, I don't know, I got all the way to like chapter 5, maybe? 
I don't remember where that is. But yeah, like before Wheatley's Betrayal, so it's still first half of the game. Because I was taking my sweet time, and then, I don't know, I started playing other stuff, and I should have, like, finished it at that point. And then, anyway, cut to now, where, um, you know, I wanted to stream more games. And I'm like, oh yeah, Portal 2. I didn't finish that. And I didn't have all the chapters unlocked, so I'm like, yeah, I'll replay it. So yeah, this is, the recording I did for this channel was really only, like, my second full playthrough. Which was pretty neat. There was a lot of stuff I forgot. At the same time, I'm a little disappointed in myself. I get so excited and just so ready to keep making videos and stuff. I went through this game really fast. <laughs> like, all my playthroughs are like an hour, maybe. And I finished this game in less than a week. Like, the recordings are scattered all over the place, but I played this all in about a week. Uh, single player wise, though. I, I have played multiplayer, that's cool too. Maybe I'll do that again. But yeah, I rushed through this game. I didn't mean to, but just the tests didn't take me very long. Like, the little segments of the game aren't actually super long, except maybe like the old aperture stuff felt kind of long. But yeah, I enjoyed it, I just wish I slowed it down. Because I have this. Here's the thing with me in this game, it's like, most of the time, I just kind of forget it exists. And even if someone mentions something about Portal 2 to me, I'm like, oh, okay, because like, I can't really remember it clearly. But then, as soon as I start playing the game, or something, one of the games, it's like, bam, that, the game replaces my brain for like, the rest of the month, basically. And that's like, all I'm fe- that's the thing. It's, it's like when I watch the Raggedy Ann movie, and it's like, I couldn't sleep unless I was thinking about this thing for like, a salt. I like, hyper fixated on this thing for a week, and then that feeling kind of just died. And I'm at that point right now, where I was thinking about it, and I had all these ideas and things I was gonna like, read through and do. And now I'm at the point where I'm just kind of like, eh, and that feeling's fading a bit, so that's why I'm making a review now. But I'm still gonna do the animations and stuff, and that'll probably get me hyped again once I'm looking through like clips of the game and like reading through things and whatnot. Okay, but yeah, let's start this. Oh, that was my little 12 minute intro there. But yeah, this is my review. Um, let's start with the gameplay stuff. I'll just literally read through my notes that I wrote. I mean, it's a puzzle game, but in terms of difficulty, it's got a good balance. Because the thing I've noticed with other kinds of puzzle games, whether it's like something on your phone or something I get on Steam, it's either really easy or it's really hard. It never has like even a story mode or anything. It's just like you do the puzzles. That's it. It's just the puzzle stuff, you know? With this game, it's like it's got its own environment and its own world. It's like playing any other game, but instead of having a gun where you shoot things, you, you do puzzles. That's it. That's literally the only thing that's keeping it as a puzzle game. It doesn't, yeah, I keep forgetting it's a puzzle game. Because if you replaced it with, like, you go in the test chambers and you have to shoot people and then the rest of the game continues like normal, it would just feel like a normal game. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, in terms of difficulty, this one's got a good balance. Like I'd say the first time I was playing through this game, the puzzles were hard. The f I'd say the first game's puzzles are harder, to be honest. When I replayed it again for this channel, I only got stuck on the really easy stuff, which is kind of funny. I, I mentioned that later in this review, though. Anyway, um, like, it requires you to think things through, but not so hard where it's, like, mind-boggling or anything. Like, I got through the puzzles on my own fine, except for a few times, but that was only because I missed something that was super obvious or I overthought something. Like, if there's anything that's going to cause you difficulty in this game with the puzzles, it's going to be yourself. Um, and I'd say that's where the real challenge is. Uh, the game has a really nice learning curve, where it'll introduce a new gameplay element, let's say, like, the gel or something, and then, like, you use that in its own test, where you just, you know, you mess with it, experiment with it, figure out how it works, whatever. So you have those little test chambers, which is like a little practice area, basically. And then you have to use those elements in the non-testing situations, like using gels or like that glowy thing that lets you go anywhere, like when you're having an escape and isn't killing you, for example. So it's like, 
we've not only had the practice for that kind of stuff, so by the time you actually have to, like, big brain and combine all the elements and stuff, you just, you have to use that stuff in the flat, you're good, you, you've got to learn by then. Um, there's only really the three testing, uh, sections to this game, I'd say, with each one, um, getting harder. So, like, Gladys' test, which are, like, the first section, I'd say, is slightly improved to, looks like, the original sort of test format, but, um, with more stuff added to it from, like, the environment and stuff. So, like, it feels very much like the original game kind of puzzles. Um, and then you play the apathy section, that's basically all about the gels, and you mess with those. Um, then you do the ace test, that's what gets harder because everything's just literally thrown together. <laughs> It doesn't even think of that. Um, like, it can get a little tricky, tricky, sorry, but only if you ever think it. And I saw comments, like, Steam comments about people getting motion sick. I sort of relate to that. Like, I'm someone who gets motion sick in, like, cars and windy roads and stuff. So, a little bit, but not too much. Um, I did feel a little motion sick at times, but it's not nearly as bad as, say, like, the newer Tomb Raider games, where I'm moving around all over the place, or I look down on a bridge, and I feel like my stomach's gonna explode. Like, I'd say the only really motion-heavy kind of parts of this game are the ones where it's like, you gotta launch yourself through the portal super duper fast, you know, where the game has like a special sound effect for that, and everything kind of gets blurry. Like, those parts make me feel like, ugh, I don't want to go off, just cause it's like, your brain thinks you're moving, but your body knows you're not moving, and that kind of disconnect is a little funky. But, um, not any motion sick to the point where I feel like I'm gonna throw up or anything. Oh, hold on, I gotta... Oh, never mind. Can I just move these? Okay, sorry, I just gotta check this out real quick. Cause normally I have to pause when I do that, but I'm just recording an image, so it's all good. Anyway, um... The controls are really good, and I played this with my Steam controller, which is great. That's the cool thing. So most things I have to play with a keyboard, but with Steam I get to use the controller. I mean, not every Steam game lets me use the controller. I'd say Portal 2 and Portal are games. Don't, don't play it with anything other than a controller. It's gonna be a pain. But, uh, especially because the controls aren't, like, fluid with this one. Like, the portal buttons, you just use the side triggers, and the game even has, like, this crosshair thing, like, when you're aiming around. It's colored in a way where you never get the buttons mixed up, because the left half of the cross trigger, crosshair, is blue, and the other one's orange, so you never forget, like, okay, which button, like, it corresponds to the button, so. And the other cool thing, too, is, like, if you put a portal somewhere, even if it's in, like, another room, and you look in that direction, you can see through the wall what color portal that is. So you're never gonna, like, really misplace the portals too much. That's, that's something you didn't have to do, but I really appreciate that. Um, you really only use the portal buttons, and then A takes care of everything, whether it's, like, jumping or selecting things or whatever. And those are really, like, the only required buttons you have to use. It's also a button to crouch, but, yeah, you never really need to crouch with the gas. Like, I think you might need to crouch to get into, like, some of the secret areas, but it's not like those are mandatory. And, like, there's a crouch button, there's a zoom in button. Like, the crouch button I never even, like, needed, really. Um, except maybe once, I, I like, crouch so the turn can't see me or whatever. Um, yeah, the zoom in button's useful because it's helpful when you gotta aim at like a super duper far away wall so you could like make sure you're getting the right shot. But other than that, you don't really need it. There's something I like doing and you might have noticed um, while I was uh, playing the game was I start zooming in onto the characters when they're talking. That's just something that I like to do. I find it funny. Makes me. I try and immerse myself in the environment and in, like the characters and dialogue as much as possible, no matter what I'm playing. So that the characters talking, and I gotta walk somewhere, I'll like pause and just 
we let them talk or whatever. You know, that's just how I am. Um, and then there's lots of times that are like in between testing where you gotta just walk around. But I'll be honest, sometimes that could be a little boring. Uh, but unless you're an old aperture, there's usually a character, either like Cloudus or Wheatley, that's just talking to you the whole time though. So that kind of makes up for it. Like they won't talk constantly. They'll eventually stop, but like that can help the area to feel less empty. That's something I kind of wish the first game had too. Uh, so gameplay wise, it's pretty simple and the puzzles are a bit balanced. And I like, I think that's neat because this game is way more focused on like story and characters than the other game. So it's like if you had really hard controls or really hard um, gameplay, you know, you'd be less likely to stick around for the story and stuff. Like, everything's really balanced with this game. Alright, then we got music. This is going to be a long section. Um, okay, I'll start reading. Uh, the, before I get into my other thing. Uh, the music has, like, three different vibes. Futuristic, kind of like something out of Tron. I'll specify, I've never seen the 80s Tron, but I have seen the new one. And a lot of Photoshop music kind of sounds a bit from that. Um, and then there's a lot of ambient noises for, like, ambient music, especially in Old Aperture. Or it's a mix of both, or dubstep, actually. So yeah, it's either, like, futuristic, ambient, or the music that sounds like you're walking through an abandoned building or something out of a horror game. It's one or a mix of both, basically. Um, Sometimes the music, especially during like important storm scenes, is like super in your face and really loud. But I'll be honest, it's really hard to hear some of these songs in game. So I was glad I was able to listen to OST. Um, so I could, I recommend that, um, listening to the soundtrack. Not even when you're playing the game, but just at some point listen to the soundtrack. And I'd say then you'll really be able to appreciate every song. Cause like if you can't hear a song in the game, it's like, you sometimes don't really hear everything that's in it if there's like a noise or a voice or something. Sometimes those can be a little drowned out. Um, like I listened to OST all at once and it kind of, it not only made me feel like I played the game for a whole hour, but it also, in like an hour, but it also um, reminded me how many music tracks there were. Because there's a lot of songs where I'm like, Wait, I don't remember this playing in the game at all. <laughs> so it's neat to really be able to hear everything. And it's true, on the soundtrack there's some songs that aren't in the game at all, or they're for like the multiplayer stuff. Um, okay. Oh, and I'd have to say that all of the like pre Gladys waking up and like escaping the facility music sounds like really creepy. So the first half of the game has like Mostly creepy music with some futuristic stuff, but then the second half is more like it gets more futuristic and more intense and stuff. I'll be honest, even though I love this game, I don't love all the music tracks that I listen to. But I would say there's probably like eight or so that I really, really like, and I'll like mention which one of those those are. So yeah, I listened to the OST yesterday when I was writing this, and I'd write like a song name and then my opinion. Um, not all of these songs are, like, my favorite, but they're basically just songs that stand out to me. So anyway, I'll just read off, um, like, the title of the song and then my thoughts on it. And I'm not going to actually play the songs. I don't really like playing, like, music specifically from stuff during the videos just because I don't want to get, like, copyright stuff involved. But yeah, I'll, I, I'll write down the titles, like, in the description, too, if you want, um, just in case, you know, like, you don't really hear me correctly or whatever, if you want to go find them. Alright, the first song is called, and this is just, like, songs that stand out again. Um, 9999. It's actually just the title screen music, um, one of the title screen music, because there's, like, five different title screens. Um, but it has this perfect, quiet, like, spooky feeling to it. And that's the thing, a lot of the music in this game sounds like kinda spooky, especially the early tracks. Uh, and then the next one is You Know Her 
and it's spelled, you know, you know her, and then with a question mark. Um, and, oh, the car at the start of this, I'd have to say, is, like, haunting. It's really, like, the perfect music to match that kind of, oh, crap, moment of Gladys waking up at the start. And then we got, there she is. And it's another song I find kind of relaxing. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I skipped Overgrowth. That's supposed to go after 999. Um, for Overgrowth, uh, still creepy, kind of relaxing. Okay, and then there she is. That's why I said it after. Okay, my bad. Um, yeah, there she is, is another song I find kind of relaxing, a little, just a bit of a mysterious vibe. And then Love of the Construct is another song that stands out to me. It plays um, in that one chamber when you get the new companion cube. It's kind of weird because it has this gentle feeling, this gentle bit in the song, but it's mixed with like really loud buzzing noises because it's supposed to be like the cube against lasers or something. It's like it's supposed to be comforting though. And I also noticed there's bits of um, Carmia audio in there too. And this isn't even like the only song on the track that has bits of other songs into it. So like Carmia Audio I noticed was a song where it just kind of kept popping up in other songs <laughs> over and over again before it's like officially introduced. So I thought that was neat because I never noticed that when playing. But yeah, Love is a Construct is definitely one that stands out to me. Um, then we got Adrenal Vapor. It's just a loop of a few notes. But it's the one song that doesn't sound like creepy or futuristic at all. It just sounds like a normal song, honestly. But also what my brain sounds like when I can't think straight. And it also reminded me of Pikmin for some reason. Then we got Turret Wife Serenade. Easily one of my favorites. One of the ones I'd have on that like top eight or whatever I said. Um, but yeah, I forgot to find it when I was actually playing the game. And I kind of regret that because it's a really cool song. You find it in some area, you find like these turrets that are hidden somewhere, and they're practicing the singing stuff, you know, because it's for the opera at the end of the game. So yeah, you f it's like a little Easter egg, you find them singing uh, Turret Wife Serenade. That's the thing, when I was playing, I didn't use like a guide or anything, I just kind of walked around and stuff. I didn't go, like, searching for anything, so I didn't end up finding, like, any of the dens or, like, the hidden turret stuff or anything. I'm thinking maybe, like, before I uninstall the game or start, like, any of the mods, I might make a video where I just go back through the game and, like, find those little areas. And I thought that would be pretty neat to show you guys that stuff. But anyway, Turret Wife Serenade, I like it because it's kind of like this robotic tango sounding song a little bit. And then the next one is called I Made It All Up, and that's a song that's rather relaxing, actually normal song, and it feels exactly like something I'd hear in Stardew Valley. Like, if you listen to that song, and you listen to a song from Stardew Valley, say, like, The Fall or The Winter Music or something, it totally sounds like something from that game. Then we got, uh, Halls of Science 4. I'll be honest, it sounds like a ringtone. <laughs> And it's a very memorable track. It feels like what an 8-bit version of a Polo song would sound like. Even though I know it is a Polo song, obviously. And then there's this other song called Intro to Bot. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, it's called Bots Build Bots. And I didn't want to like give it its own little thing. Because here's the thing, I really, really like the intro to that song, but I don't like the rest of the song. But I thought I'd mention it as like a footnote. Um, there's another song, an ancient, no, not ancient, I, I can't read today. It's called An Accent Beyond. And the reason it's called that is right before you escape with Meet Me, he does this like shitty American accent trying to make sure Gladys can't hear him. And then the music starts and stuff. But yeah, I thought that was a cool title for that song. Anyway, it's iconic escape music, honestly. It's great. It reminded me of this YouTube comments where there's like some song that's supposed to give you anxiety or whatever or it's like really hectic and you read through the comments and people write like, oh yeah, I, when I have to like cram all my studying in one day or 
of run back home and take the chicken out or something like you know this kind of comment that's what the song reminded me of um the next song is turret redemption run it feels a little like something i'd hear in luigi's mansion oh that's the uh, that's another thing too i actually did like a full playthrough of the original luigi's mansion a while ago but i didn't on my other channel actually i kind of regret that because you guys probably would like to see that um I had mentioned that on a channel before, and I used to, like, not really want to talk about it. Now I don't mind. It's called, um, Game Space and then Capital B Cube. Because I just play GameCube games in there. But yeah, I have a playthrough of Luigi's Mansion on there. It doesn't have any commentary, but I thought, oh, yeah, Halloween's coming up. Or, actually, no, I'm posting this in November. Halloween's past me. You might want to check it out. But I just... And I have, like, more Mario Party and stuff on there, too. Um, okay, yeah, let's, let's continue. Um, then the next song is called Don't Do It. It's from when you gotta press the button, you know the part. Um, I like how the music kind of just goes up and down, I guess, and it still keeps that haunting feeling. Because it's one of those tense moments where, like, you don't know what to do. It's like, you gotta push the button or whatever. And then the next song, it's in all caps, it's called I'm Not a Moron. I'd say it's another one of my favorite tracks on that, like, list of eight or whatever. Um, it starts out like a typical portal track. Actually more like something in a movie. But then when you go to the part in the song, like, where Wheatley takes over, it just goes full drama. I love it. It's great. Um, then we got... Gosh, some days are just spelled weird. Vitification? Okay, yeah, it's called Vitification Order. And I'd say that one really captures the bit building feeling. Like, seriously, if you change the plot of Portal, like, you keep some of the songs, you get rid of the comedy, and you make the areas look less futuristic, it could totally be a horror game, for sure. Easily. Or even if you played a horror game, muted the volume and put some of the Portal 2 soundtrack on, totally would get you in the vibe. Um, oh, that gives me a good drawing idea. Anyway, uh, then we got Music of the Spheres. I don't really know why it's called that, because spheres always makes me think of cores. This isn't related to cores at all. Anyway, makes me think of older styles of music. Kind of reminds me of some um, musician named Philip Glass. There's a song of his I really like, too, that kind of reminds me of this one. I don't remember what it's called though, sorry. Next we got, uh, You Are Not Part of the Control Group. It really captures that, like, happy wee feeling I get of, like, jumping on the blue gel for the first time. It's more calming, and it's kind of like a break between all the crazy stuff that happens with Wheatley, and then the empty feeling of old aperture. Like, the game's trying to get you excited about things again after all the, like, the drama and the melancholy and whatever. It's another track I really, really liked. Here we got, uh, Potatoes Lament. I actually completely forgot about this song. Like, I don't remember hearing this in the game, but it's hauntingly beautiful, even if it's just random phrases in Latin. And it really gave me Zelda vibes, definitely on that, like, top eight list. Um, then we got Reconstructing More Signs. This one's really cool, it makes me want to dance, honestly. Um, and Frank and Terrence. Reminds me of Halloween music. I'm actually thinking of making a Halloween playlist for music, and then posting that sometime in, like, early October. Might add that on there, I'm considering it. Then we got Machiavellian Batch, another one of my top eight. Um, I love the shift in it, so going from classical music to techno. Like, they're fitting it from, like, this kind of old-timey song to, like, something that would fit in Polo. And the classical music at the start feels like it would transition into, like, some kind of boss fight song. You know, sometimes they do that, where they'll have, like, a choir or an organ, like, with a few notes, and then it goes really hard into the boss music and stuff. So, yeah, I thought it was cool. I've always liked that one. Um, and then there's OMG, What Has He Done? And, yeah, that's how it's spelled. It's super dramatic. I love the intro in that one. 
It's kind of like a you're in the final dungeon, no point of return vibe, honestly. I'm, I'm here for that. And then we got bombs for throwing at you, and then um, parentheses, four part plan. It's the final boss fight music, so of course it's going to be great. Uh, easily in my top eight, top five, whatever, because uh, it's a bop. I've, it's actually the, one of the only songs when I was listening to OST where I just listened to the entire thing because it's that good. Uh, then we got Your Precious Moon. This one is also cool because it's such a suspenseful moment. Because like you look at the moon like when the game pans up to it and you think like, there's, there's no way you're gonna shoot the moon, man. And I like how the song even has that um that part where you get sucked into space, like the song in the audio actually has that noise of everything going through the portal to the moon, including you. So I thought that was nice. Like, not all the songs keep the sound effects, but some of them do. And then we got Cara Mia Audio, which I mentioned earlier. Number one favorite track in the entire series for me, it's just absolutely beautiful. It just, it gives me so many emotions, honestly, because it's happy and sad. And you know that even though the main character is free and she doesn't have to test anymore and get bullied by robots, the game's over now. So it's kind of like a final goodbye, not just to the protagonist, but to the player and to the series, really. Especially because, um, you know, there's a third game. And if you look at the lyrics, which I, I did, like this, the playlist I was on, it like actually wrote out the lyrics for this one, which is cool. Um, in English, because it's another one in Latin. It's basically Gladys effectively telling Chill to leave. And this is a song in the series that always gets me, like, super emotional every time I hear it. Because it's just so powerful, really. It's great. And, like, not something you'd expect out of Portal, you know? Then we got What You Gone. What? Oh, I said that we had Want You Gone. There we go. It wouldn't be a portal game without a Gladys goodbye song. I mean, I know I said like a second ago, yeah, Karmia Audio, that's a goodbye song. But like, you know, when you gone is this game's still alive, basically. Um, this this song is like much more in line with her character compared to Karmia Audio. Because like with that one, you look at the lyrics and she's like, oh, my, my dear and my darling girl and whatever. And then when you gone, she's just super passive aggressive. <laughs> Because it's like her, conf her conflicted feeling of like hating Chell, but then also knowing that she's her only friend and like her feeling with that and like what happened with Caroline and stuff. But it's like, even outside of the character development stuff with the song, it's just, it's a good, it's a really good song. And we got space, and that is spelled like S-P and then like a bunch of A's and then C-E. I thought this song was going to sound way sadder seeing that it's from, it's part of Wheatley's goodbye scene. Yeah, it's the song that plays. Um, so I remember that's always a sad moment, and I thought there was, like, actual music in it. But then I listened to the song on the, um, the OST, and it's actually just space sounds. Like, there's no music, it's just space noises. Very ambient and stuff. But I guess it's still kind of sad, because it reminds us that, you know, Wheatley's stuck out there in, like, huge, empty, terrifying space forever. So I guess it makes sense that there wouldn't be music, especially because he's supposed, supposed to focus on the speech, and it would just be, you know, what space would sound like, basically. Though, I also remember seeing some comments that made it feel worse, because it's like, you don't hear sound in space or something. So, like, of course the, like, the player can hear him talk, we have to, but, like, really, if he was talking, there wouldn't be any noise at all. It'd just be silent, and that's like kind of sad, honestly. And then we got Space Phase, and this one plays on the final title screen, because when you finish the game and you go to the menu again, it's the last title screen with this song, and it ha and it's space with like Wheatley and the space club floating around, and it's like right after his apology. So it's pretty much the last song you hear in the game, like if you weren't ever gonna boot up the game again. I actually love this one, definitely in my top 8, top 5. Doesn't really give me portal vibes at all, but I can't think of what it's reminding me of. Wish I could remember. 
And I was surprised that it had, it's one of those songs that has bits of uh, Carmia audio in there. Because that's a song that's, I've noticed, like, it's a song for the companion cube, but then they also use it for the turns. It's basically a song that, like, kind of leans more towards Gladys and Chell, basically. Like, any anything that has to do with, like, love and freedom, that's sort of where that song pops up, but more when it relates to those two characters, like with the companion cube. It's this item Chell loves that Gladys destroys, or it's the song the turrets sing, but it's like an emotional goodbye song from Gladys to Chell. So to hear that song pop up without either character involved, because it's never associated with Wheatley, but to have that be the song that plays after he apologizes was kind of interesting. I don't know if that's supposed to hint something, or... Because I know we mentioned about freedom, and how Wheatley wouldn't have any at that point, but it's not associated with his character, so I'm like, huh, kind of a weird choice. Unless it's supposed to be, like, a way to show, like, yeah, his apology's supposed to be genuine, you know? But I don't know, I'm just kind of rambling on that. Um, and I only noticed that, actually, when I was listening to it on the soundtrack, that it had those bits in there. Uh, it still has space vibes, but not as depressing as the previous song. So this one's actually just music. Um, and I think it's a good choice to be the final song in the game. And it's not like creepy or futuristic or anything, it's just calm. It gives me these vibes of like, you can relax now. Kind of like the final song in Mother 3 plays over, um, and this isn't a spoiler or anything, it plays over a white screen. It's called like Phantasma or whatever. And it's also, you know, like this one where it's like the final song you hear. The thing is, they both kind of give vibes of like, you can relax now. The thing is, the other song sounds more depressing, and this one's just chill, I guess. Yeah, I really, really like Space Face a lot. Good, good, ch good choice to be the last song in the game for the story mode. Okay, and then I also added, um, Robots FTW, and that's spelled in all caps, so Robots for the win. Um, so this one isn't actually from the single player story mode at all. It's the credits music uh, for the co-op mode, but it's honestly such a good song that I had to add it in here in my list because it really makes you feel like a winner is how I describe it. It's a really good song. Um, it's a bop. Um, and then there's also this other song called Exile Vilify. The thing is, I didn't. S I thought it was going to be on the OST because I thought it was one of the songs from the lit video that you find. Because it's a song that I think was made like for the game or it's associated with the game so much that I thought it was like in the OST somewhere. So because I didn't find the radios, I don't actually know if the game the song is in the game. But it's a really good song regardless, though it's like kinda depressing actually. Like I thought it was on the radio but as an instrumental. But yeah, I'd recommend looking it up to like I was thinking of even making a playlist of like Portal 2 stuff and I was gonna add that song in there. Okay, this is already like 40 minutes, and I still have to go through setting story, characters, and general notes, and that's another like three pages. So, I, I knew the songs was going to take up a lot of time. But yeah, that's at least the songs and gameplay and stuff. So yeah, this is going to be part one, obviously. So, I'll see you in the next part.